Lathrop alumni are tradesmen, doctors, business owners, lawyers, a television news producer, and professional athletes. Lathrop Homes alumni support the preservation of Lathrop as public and affordable housing. I was talking to my younger brother Richard and um, I was telling him, hey Richard, do you remember I took mom's pants cream that was empty and uh, we had this uh, fake snake that had a spring in, in it and we stuck it inside the pond's cream and we went around just to get to know new neighbors and stuff. And we said, hey, you wanna try this cream? It's really good. And when they opened it, the snake popped out and it was really funny. Edna grew up on the north side of Chicago in a low-rise development constructed in 1937 as part of a national effort to alleviate the housing shortage for poor and working Americans in the Great Depression. With the nation facing yet another recession, the historic role of this community is being threatened. In 2000, the Chicago Housing Authority set up the Plan for Transformation. It was designed to provide quality, affordable housing options in viable communities for CHA residents. It has resulted in significant displacement for the residents of public housing. When the plan started 10 years ago, the CHA recognized that Lathrop was among its best assets. Unlike other developments, it is a low-rise, racially diverse development with many residents working full-time. Additionally, it is located in Chicago's rapidly gentrifying north side. The Chicago Housing Authority's plan for transformation puts a premium on mixed-income communities. However, the area around Lathrop is quickly becoming a homogenous income community. Lathrop Homes is surrounded on all sides by housing that is generally unaffordable for low and middle income families. We don't think um, the CHA vision, which is calling for a mix of replacement housing for existing uh, uh, residents um, and uh, affordable housing and then market rate, is really called for here. All around Lathrop, there's been uh, the development of high-end housing in the last 10 years, this to-be-determined status, in combination with the CHA's order that the management not re-lease units after families move, has led to over 600 vacancies. And while this has disrupted life for residents, individuals like Mildred Pagan fight to stay because of the community that Lathrop has offered her. It's always been like a big family, because even now that it's only a, a small amount of people, we, you know, we, we like, our brothers and sisters because let's say I'm not here and if somebody come and knock on my door my neighbor will tell me somebody was knocking on your door. Oh, my name is Mildred Pagan and I've been living here for 35 years. It's been we always you know like like a family like but now it's sad because there's not a lot of people here. It isn't only residents who have been affected by the lengthy to-be-determined status. Many local institutions that depended on Lathrop's robust community have been se severely hurt by the loss of residents. The Church of the Good News has been forced to close as their congregation shrank with each board up. I think the to-be-determined status has created, um, has been very detrimental. The unexpressed intentional uh, process of moving people out under the auspices of great promises of better neighborhoods and better apartments and even the possibility of being able to come back someday um, affected the, the great exodus. The reality is that the board up of properties has no correlation to the demand for affordable housing in Chicago neighborhoods. Waitlists for affordable housing are long, and recent data from the Chicago Rehab Network show that 51% of renters in Chicago are cost burdened.
There's lots of ways at, at 3M Network that we look at the need for affordable housing. We look at waiting lists. So we know that at a local CDC, Pickerdeck Redevelopment Corporation, they have over 5,000 households wanting to rent housing. For many years, we have been watching Lathrop and hoping that it would be used for affordable housing, that it would be improved. Um, we've watched CHA's annual plans not specify what would happen at Lathrop. We've seen its census go down, and um, we've made recommendations hoping that it would be a place where the underserved could live. Groups like the Lathrop Leadership Team and nonprofits like Logan Square Neighborhood Association, Landmarks Illinois, and the Chicago Rehab Network have invested countless hours to protect the historical role of Lathrop. Though resident and community voices were included in CHA's working group, their perspective was seemingly ignored. The future does not look good as the CHA's plan for transformation moves forward. Rather than demolish Lathrop and dramatically reduce the number of public and affordable units as the CHA plan does, another proposal has been developed by LSNA and Landmarks Illinois that preserves Lathrop as 100% affordable. It's like you get something and they give you a chance to better yourself. They just take it away from you. So it's like, when will the low income people ever get the chance to better themselves? Um, I don't think anybody, if they didn't live in Lathrop and they couldn't afford to do the things that they wanted to do, I don't think Lathrop was a stepping stone for that. And I don't think they, you know, who knows, you know, but maybe they would have, they wouldn't have had it uh, that way to try and go to college or, I, you know, I don't know. How much do you believe what you say about the kind of community you want to live in? Like, do you believe that you really want a diverse community enough to fight for a diverse community? Or do you just like saying that because it's kind of posh to say that I like living in a place that's diverse. You really believe those things, and housing is the fight where it all starts. Um, so yeah, if you want your kids to grow up in a diverse community, preserve Lathrop. Because at the end of the day, if you don't, they're going to be surrounded by people who can only afford $400,000 condos. I mean, what, what do we really believe? And at the end of the day, what we really believe is the stuff we're willing to give our time and our money to. Period.